Also, I have an unexpected announcement. In fact the announcement is so unexpected that it might make most of you guys have your hair fall off your heads. Let me show you something. Oh god the big boat got a new gaming laptop so I won't be getting benchmark videos for my extremely powerful Intel Celeron N2840 anymore oh no 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 I'm unsubscribing fuck this shit. Well, yes, in a way, I got a new gaming laptop. Actually, the truth is that this gaming laptop isn't new at all. In fact, I've technically had it for more than 5 years at this point. I don't remember mentioning that I secretly have a gaming laptop. But since you guys found out, here's the backstory. So, my old Lenovo IdeaPad 100, the laptop with the Intel Celeron N2840 featured in my benchmark videos, was bought by my parents for me as an early Christmas present in 2016. I had two other laptops, the first one, a 2009 model Asus, very slow performance wise but surprisingly reliable, was only for my parents. The other one, which was supposed to be for my personal use, was a 2012 model HP Pavilion 15 with AMD components. It was relatively decent performance wise, however, it was also constantly having issues, and had to be taken to the repair guy every 2-3 to three months for reinstallation of Windows. So by 2016, my parents were tired of spending money on repairing the HP laptop, and one month before Christmas, they decided to buy me a new and more reliable laptop. I was given the permission to choose the new laptop myself. Keep in mind that my parents' budget wasn't high, so my choices were pretty limited. While I was browsing that local for my country laptop website, I stumbled upon a Lenovo laptop, which was one of the cheapest laptops in the website then, with a processor whose clock speeds were 2.58 GHz. So my parents and I said to ourselves, wow, 2.58 GHz, and so cheap, you know what, we are choosing it. By the way I was 10 years old at the time. So I didn't know anything about processor models and stuff like that. And only after half a year did I realize that I chose an absolute potato of a laptop. So there's the definition of you get what you pay for. In mid-2017, my mother sold the two old laptops for parts. And with the money that she made out of selling the two laptops for parts, we were able to afford, well, the gaming laptop. Obviously I was extremely happy about this massive upgrade, like... As someone with really low standards, my mind was blown by seeing GTA 5 running at 60 plus FPS with high settings at 1080p, which is something I thought I could only dream of. Now, since I was still a little unspoiled kid, I didn't exactly take care of the gaming laptop properly. I remember literally giving the keyboard a Coca-Cola bath after previously spilling other shit over it rendering some of the keys unusable, thinking that it will fix the broken keys. Its current keyboard isn't the original one. I remember constantly using it on my bed, allowing the fans to get incredibly clogged with dust over a short period of time. I remember dropping it a few times. I remember keeping it plugged in constantly for months. Nowadays I can't even get one hour of battery life from it, even when not much load is being put onto the components without the battery suddenly going from 75 to 0%. And when I try to play a game on battery, the laptop shuts down entirely, so you can understand how much has my now kinda old gaming laptop been through at the disposal of my hands. This laptop served me well until 2021, when supposedly its hard drive failed, and this happened. Due to lack of money needed to replace the drive, I was forced to go back to the old Lenovo IdeaPad which was actually used by my mother during that period for her documents and other office stuff. Yeah, it was still working surprisingly. I also used a school laptop briefly, and then we come to the end of November 2022, when my gaming laptop was finally repaired. After a year and a half of waiting, it turned out that it wasn't a hard drive problem, but rather a software error. And here we are today. Now let's talk about its specs shall we? As some of you might have guessed, 
it's the Lenovo Legion Y520 from 2017. Very decent choice back then if you wanted to play practically everything on a budget. However nowadays it's quite outdated for recent and demanding games. Although it's still very decent for older or less demanding esports titles overall. As for CPU power, it has a 7th gen Intel Core i7-7700HQ, which was one of the best laptop CPUs back when it released. It has 4 cores with hyper-threading, 6 megabytes of L3 cache, and turbo boost clock speeds of up to 3.80 GHz. By the way, HQ doesn't stand for high quality. According to Intel, H stands for high performance optimized for mobile, and Q stands for quad core. Sadly though, this i7, along with the rest of Intel's high-end 7th gen CPUs in general, very quickly became completely outgunned after AMD came in with their Ryzen line and Intel was forced to step in their game. As for graphics power, we of course have the i7's integrated graphics. The Intel HD Graphics 630, whose dedicated segment size I was able to increase to 512 megabytes by following a YouTube tutorial. And here's the dedicated GPU, which is an Nvidia GeForce GTX 1050 with 4 gigs of VRAM, which was mid-range back when it came out. Note, despite the 4 GB VRAM, this is not a GTX 1050 Ti. It's just 1050 without the TI, so it's actually a little bit weaker. I wonder why there isn't a 4GB variant of the 1050 non-TI for desktop. You might have noticed that I'm using outdated drivers from 2018, and you'll find out why. I undervolted both the i7 and the GTX 1050, and you won't believe how much this helped with the temperatures during gaming. Before the undervolt, the GPU was running at 93 degrees Celsius during heavy load, but with the undervolt, Temps rarely even exceed 75 degrees, so if you have a gaming laptop with the same CPU and GPU or similar, please do it. Your system will definitely thank you. It's not hard to do as long as you know what you're doing actually. As for system RAM, we have 8GB of 2400MHz DDR4 RAM in single channel mode unfortunately. And although 8GB RAM was enough for anything back then, nowadays you have games that want more than 8 gigs. Looking at you Warzone, not to mention that the fact that it's in single channel, it's greatly limiting the integrated graphics's capabilities you know. And now here comes the controversial part. The boot drive and the operating system. The Lenovo Legion Y520 sticker claims that the laptop has a PCIe SSD. Let's see if that's true. And, well, guess what? This SSD doesn't exist. Instead, we have a 5400 RPM Seagate hard drive. And as for the e-partition, that is my external hard drive. If you think that I'm lying, well, let's see what user benchmark says. Benchmarks. Missing SSD. The boot partition is located on a mechanical or hybrid drive. Moving the system to an SSD will yield far faster boot times, better system responsiveness and faster application load times. Wow. Thanks Lenovo, for lying to me with that sticker for all of those years. This hard drive is actually quite a problem, because, while I was using the laptop from 2017 to 2021, as Windows 10 got more updates and as SSDs became ever more popular, Windows began to assume that I have an SSD as the boot partition drive instead of a traditional mechanical hard drive, and by 2020, without me having any clue about what is an SSD, my laptop ended up being quite unresponsive, and those Windows updates might have contributed to the eventual software error in mid-2021. Currently, I'm using an old version of Windows 10, version 15.11 from 2015 to be exact, which isn't even supported anymore. Do you guys remember when the start menu used to look like this? Because of the old Windows 10 version, I can't even install the latest drivers for my GTX 1050 GPU. Although to be honest, when you have a 5400 RPM hard drive that has been through a lot of abuse as your boot partition drive, having an old version of Windows 10 is a necessity to ensure decent system responsiveness, which thankfully Windows 10 version 1511 does provide. I refuse to update my Windows version until I upgrade to an SSD sooner or later. I even disabled automatic updates once again by following a YouTube tutorial. So these are the specs of my 5 year old Lenovo Legion Y520 that you guys didn't know I have until now, as some of you can tell, it's in a serious need of some upgrades. 
First thing that in my opinion definitely needs to be changed is the battery. Another thing that must be done is the installation of an SSD and an upgrade to a newer Windows version. Because with how unresponsive Windows is nowadays on the old tech with the release of recent Windows 10 updates and subsequently Windows 11. Having a mechanical hard drive as your boot drive really sucks in 2022, 2023 almost, and although Windows 10 version 1511 is quite lightweight, it's outdated, and no longer supported by Microsoft, not to mention that I can't even install the latest drivers for my Nvidia GPU on it. Finally I would add another stick of 8 gigs of RAM, if I want to play the most unoptimized recent games without stuttering issues. As for the old Intel Celeron N2840 laptop, well, a month ago, my mother got herself a better laptop for her office work, and after my gaming laptop got repaired, it was decided that the old Intel Celeron N2840 laptop will go to mom's workplace and stay there for the rest of its existence to find a purpose of something in the words of a reserved text writing machine, never to see any gaming again, therefore putting an official end to my Intel Celeron N2840 benchmarks. But guys, I have to tell you something, I actually find it quite fun to make this type of videos. Over the last 8 months or so, making benchmark videos has ended up becoming a hobby for me, and I would feel quite uncomfortable if I just ended it here without any further notice. So expect to see some benchmarks from my Lenovo Legion Y520 in the future. As for those who are gonna be sad about me stopping with the Intel Celeron N2840 content, well, I'm just gonna tell you this. If you still use a laptop with the Intel Celeron N2840 or similar please, I'm begging you please, upgrade as soon as possible, because, I mean, you can't be using a Celeron that's weaker than a 2006 Core 2 Duo. In 2025, even a $200 second-hand laptop, as long as it's reliable, will offer way better performance than a laptop with that Celeron. I'm being serious, so this is my completely unexpected announcement. If you listen through all of this, I'm congratulating you. I know that this is a disappointing announcement for many of my followers, but I hope you enjoy my content nevertheless, because I myself enjoy making it. And yeah, until the next one, it's a bye-bye.